Thousands of people fall for cyber scams every day, and many are afraid to admit it happened to them. But we found one group brave enough to tell their stories. Our parents. They learned the hard way so you don't have to. This is Mom Don't Click That. All right, welcome back to Mom Don't Click That. I'm Alex Falcone, and we are bringing together security professionals and their parents to discuss some of the frauds and scams hiding out on the internet. Uh, I have with me today Lawrence and Kelvin. Uh, Kelvin, why don't you introduce yourself first? Kelvin Coleman, Executive Director of the National Cybersecurity Alliance. And uh, of course, you know, I have the great pleasure of working with Media Pro. Uh, one of our wonderful, wonderful partners. All right, and then also we have uh, we have Lawrence here. Lawrence, um, tell us about yourself. Tell us about your background. I was born in Blair, South Carolina, this country place. I went in the military, stayed in there a while, and I got out of there. I joined the South Carolina National Guard. I stayed in there 25 years, and I worked at a nuclear power plant. You know, I worked there for 37 years, and then once I retired from there. I came out and got my CDL license, and I drove school buses about four and a half years, and I just retired from there about two weeks ago. And which was harder, driving school buses or working in a nuclear power plant? Driving school buses. <laughs> no doubt about it. So you have a story for us. You have encountered something uh, on the internet, and you're going to tell us about it. So just take it away. Tell us your story. What happened? One night, I was laying in bed watching te television as usual, and this young guy I drive buses with, he about... 20-something years old, he called me. He said, Mr. Cullen, what you need the information for? I said, what information? And he said, on your Facebook uh, page, I got something saying you need some information from me. And I said, well, Justin, I said, I don't know who did it or how they did it or what you talking about. But I'm laying here in the bed and I'm not going to nail my phone. So. <laughs> and then uh, when two months longer, another one of my friends called, same thing. So I finally called my daughter and she said, Dad, is somebody gonna hack your Facebook? <laughs> hack it? What you mean by hack it? One thing that jumps out at me, Kelvin, do you feel like you were um, slighted by him choosing your sister over you to help out? You're a security professional. You know, my, my sister is so much smarter than me. So that was probably the, the, the better call. Uh, <laughs> to make. So what sort of information were they asking for? Did you find that out? One guy told me to uh, ask him, uh, a riding number, social security numbers, you know, and stuff like that. Uh, uh, general information like that, date of birth. Asking for that information, right? Uh, yeah, personally identifiable information leads to, uh, in most cases, some sort of financial uh, motivation, right? To, to get a routing number, to get a social security number, to get an address, to, you know, put these pieces together uh, to figure out who, you know, my father is and, and, and his friends, right? And then they can then, you know, have access to some key financial accounts to, uh, uh, to get funds. Unfortunately, some people, uh, it is not necessarily because, you know, they're not being smart, but maybe they're being concerning and caring for their friends who will fall for these things. I level easy, fruit. That's the easier one to pick. That, you don't have to bend over at all. That's the easier one to pick. That's exactly right. You know, these bad actors continue to use those techniques because it works for them. It's high reward, low risk for, for the bad actors. So how did they get in? That's the, my main question is, how did they get into his Facebook account in the first place? I probably hit the wrong button somewhere. <laughs> I probably hit the wrong button somewhere in the line. Oh. My, my father, in, in all likelihood, probably clicked on a link um, that was sent to him uh, and, and probably from a trusted source. You think it was a link in a Facebook message or on a Facebook post as opposed to in an email or something? I, I think so. Yeah, perhaps. He also has an email account. It could have happened there as well. That sounds a little bit scarier to me. I know that with an email, we don't want to download attachments from strangers, but you're saying a friend might have sent a message with just a link. That seems normal. That seems easy to click on. Right. It is. It is. It is. And that's why in October, uh, we're saying, you know, do your part, be cyber smart, right? You have to be very careful of the links that you click on. What do you look for in a link to avoid? How do you know that something's not a safe link? It's a very simple thing. When in doubt, throw it out, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, to a certain extent, you know, particularly if you don't trust the source, right? If you get just an email from an a anonymous, well, not even anonymous, but an unknown uh, source, uh, you know, no, I, I'm not opening that. If I get a link from a, a, a trusted source, I'll probably send a quick text. Hey, did you send me something with a link in it? I know that seems a bit more uh, of an effort. Um, to, in today's world because we want it instantly. 
uh, but it saves a world of, of, of heartache down the road. I think, you know, authenticating it, right? Making sure it did come from uh, that, that source. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Kelvin and Lawrence. Uh, be safe out there. Watch what you're clicking on. And uh, we really appreciate you sharing your stories with us. 